What's going on guys? Eli Infante here with a Canon EOS R review for portrait photography. Now I'm mainly a portrait photographer that does high speed sync and some natural light photography and I wanted to test out the new Canon mirrorless camera. Me and my friend Rolando Sanchez decided to rent it out for two weeks and get the adapter along with the 50 millimeter RF lens. In this video we're going to cover what I didn't like about the camera and what I liked about the camera along with is it a camera that I would consider purchasing for my style of shooting? So let's get started. My first impressions of the camera when I first used it was that it was a beautiful camera. It fit really well in the hands and it was actually really lightweight. Now I had came from the 60D, the 5D Mark III and I've used the T5i, T6i and T7i. I teach photography with my students. So I was very familiar with Canon. So I was very curious, was the menu system going to be easy to set up and use? Well, it only took me about five minutes to set up. So if you own a DSLR from Canon and you're thinking of transitioning into the mirrorless, I'm telling you it's super easy to set up and it's very, very customizable compared to the DSLR series. After using the EOS R for about two weeks, there was a couple of things that I really enjoyed during my portrait photo shoots. One being that it was a lot of fun to use. My first photo shoot, I was a little nervous, wasn't really sure what exactly I was doing, but as I got more practice and I started shooting with it more, I became addicted to the camera and wanted to use it more and more. The camera was also very comfortable in the hands as I mentioned before and the EVF was good. I wouldn't say the EVF was the best one I've ever seen but it was good enough for my style of shooting. In addition to that the touchscreen was very very responsive. I used the touchscreen to set my focus point where I wanted to land on the eye but I'll get more in depth about that in a moment. I also like the customizable ring on the lens. I used that for my ISO and found that to be a nice feature to have. Also, the camera has a gate to block off any dust when you're switching lenses. I have the Sony a7 III and when I'm switching lenses, I get a bunch of dust. Now that's more of my fault, but being that the Canon has that built-in gate, it's really, really helpful to prevent dust getting inside the camera. Lastly, you can never go wrong with a flip out screen. It helped me out in a couple of shots that I got during the photo shoots that I'm about to show you, but it's just a nice feature to have and it becomes very helpful when you're trying to get certain types of shots. Now I wanna talk about the autofocus in this camera. We all know as portrait photographers, it is crucial that we get the eyes in focus. Was I able to get that using the EOS R? The way I set up the camera was I used face tracking autofocus for my portraits. Now my initial fear was that shooting at face detection with the box was it going to be in focus with the eye? I was using the 50 millimeter 1.2 and I was very impressed that the eyes were very tack sharp on the images, even on the eye using face detection. Now, when I wasn't using face detection autofocus, I customized the touch bar so that I can switch from face detection to single autofocus. I used drag autofocus on the touch screen in the back so that I can adjust the focus so that it landed on the eye and that worked perfectly. I had zero issues with getting focus using that method. I am going to be showing you some videos. I did some tests with the 85 Sigma and the 135 for the DSLR cameras and I'll show you how the face tracking actually worked and I was once again impressed with the fact that it was tracking the subject really, really well. Some of the things that I didn't like about the EOS R was the fact that they removed that joystick. I don't know why Canon decided to do that, but they broke my heart, they crushed my heart because that was my favorite thing to use in the 5D Mark III and the Sony a7 III to move my focus point. Now, even though I was able to adjust it with the customizable features to use drag autofocus on the touchscreen, it just felt a little too weird for my finger to be moving across. Didn't really fit right. And I would rather have the joystick opposed to the touch bar. The touch bar was okay, it wasn't really something that was a great feature to have in my opinion. I'd rather have the joystick instead. Another one was the fact that the eye autofocus only works when you're doing close-ups. The moment you go past a medium shot, then you go back to face tracking and even though face tracking was good, I would prefer to have eye autofocus in a full shot or a medium shot and not be limited to only close-ups. Another thing is that there was no IBIS. I need IBIS when I'm doing my night photography because I'm going to slower shutter speeds and going to slow shutter speeds is gonna increase my chances of getting a blurred image. And so that was a bummer that they didn't include that. 
Additionally, the price I feel compared to the Sony a7 III probably could have been a little bit less, but regardless, I had a lot of fun shooting with the camera and it was a, it's a camera that I would still recommend for portrait photography. Now, I know a lot of you guys are wondering, Eli, should I get an EOS R? I have the 5D Mark III, I have the 5D Mark IV. What are the advantages of getting an EOS R? Now, one is if you shoot natural light, puro natural light, you're gonna have that EVF. You're gonna avoid wasting time taking shots and then looking at your camera to see if you got the exposure correct. You have that EVF now and it's gonna save you a lot of time and you're gonna work a lot faster. Now, the second thing, this was my main reason why I switched from DSLR to mirrorless was the fact of the focus points. The DSLR app would frustrate me so much because you're limited with where you could focus and you would have to do the focus and then recompose, which was super frustrating and annoying because I like to shoot at aperture 1.4, 2.0, even 1.8 at times. And I remember so many times with my 5D Mark III, I would focus and then recompose and then be happy about a shot. I'd be like, yes, I got the shot. And then I would have to look back into my camera, zoom in to the eyes, and then I'm like, ah, oh, la cagué, it's out of focus. And I would have to get the model and try to recreate the shot. And then it wasn't the same and I'd just be frustrated. So it was kind of like a, like a random game, like, oh, can I get it in focus or can I get it out of focus? So what I started doing with my DSLR is I wouldn't do the focus and recompose. I would just leave the dot on the eye, but then I would sacrifice my composition because I wanted to get my focus tack sharp. Now mirrorless, that's the huge advantage. You can use that focus point pretty much anywhere you want so they can land on the eye. Even though this camera doesn't have eye autofocus, you can still change the focus point and make sure it lands on the eye if you're doing portraits. So that's another, another huge advantage of the EOS R and the mirrorless systems. Another advantage is the EOS R does have eye autofocus. And if you do studio stuff and you do a lot of close-ups, then you'll get that eye autofocus. I did mention earlier that the eye autofocus doesn't work after close-ups, but if you're a studio photographer and you do a lot of close-ups, then that eye autofocus in the mirrorless camera is gonna be a huge advantage for you. My final impressions of the camera is I would definitely recommend this camera for portrait photographers, especially if you shoot Canon. Now, I won't purchase the camera just yet because I have the Sony a7 III and buying this camera wouldn't add any value to my work and it wouldn't really make me a better photographer. I will say that the camera was fun to use and I didn't feel held back using the camera. I know a lot of people made a big deal about it not having eye autofocus and I still got great shots using the EOS R. It was a really fun camera to use and I would look forward to using it again if I had the opportunity. I also probably will consider purchasing the next EOS R, assuming they add the joystick and features that I was looking for. Thanks for watching. I do want to leave you with some behind the scenes and some photo examples of me using the EOS R. You will also find some raw files in the description below if you want to compare them to maybe a 5D Mark III or a 5D Mark IV. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.
Like, look at me, everybody. That is me. I did that.